Hey Smokers, Drago one here, and today we're going to be taking another look at Haiku OS. So I originally came up with the idea to revisit Haiku OS for a couple of reasons. The first of all was that I just did a video on React OS, which every single time I try it left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Things were not flowing. Things were were, were hanging up. Things were uh, I was things were, were were blocking my flow. Whereas Haiku OS was pretty much the absolute opposite of that experience, and uh, I walked away absolutely refreshed. Now this is just first impressions, and this is your end user experience. And I didn't get into the technicalities of every nook and cranny of the OS, and so I thought that if I decided to go back and do a little checkup update to see how React OS was doing. Couldn't I do the same thing with Haiku OS? Since I was so impressed with it two years ago, why wouldn't I uh, be, in theory, would I be just as impressed, if not more, two years later? A little bit smaller time gap, but whatever. Now, this was all well and good. I was going to do a Haiku OS video, and it was just going to be a little update, and I was going to see what sort of things you could still do, and hell, I might even try Doom 3 if that somehow works. But then I got an even better idea. Instead of doing the pretty predictable video in that sense, why don't I do the, and I'm sure a lot of people have done these types of videos before, can you use Haiku OS as a daily driver? That's much different than uh, my previous take on Haiku OS. Before, as just its standalone operating system when stood next to the likes of, I don't know, random Linux distributions, React OS, um, whatever I happened to be testing at this time, which included like Visopsis and. Uh... And so at the time, my perception was a little bit altered to the point where Haiku OS looked like God when really it was actually just performing adequately, not unlike a regular Linux distribution. Now, Haiku OS is not Linux. I know it's based on BOS. Today, again, we're going to be using my old daily driver machine, which I just swapped out for an i9 machine. So it's quite fitting that this would be the right hardware, something I couldn't really do before since I didn't have something that powerful as a test machine before I was using like 2008 to 2000 roughly 2008 hardware. Now I'm kicking it up a notch to 2011. Um, that's not actually that impressive, but uh, it, it, I've run Death Stranding on this. It can it can pull 60 frames per second sometimes. I, uh, okay, and as a nod to the previous video, we're gonna try and boot it off of a compact flash card since uh, that didn't work on React to us before. Now the thing with um, this is, or with the Haiku OS boot device, is that it is able to use UEFI to boot. It doesn't require BIOS or any weird setups where you're only in IDE mode. No, you can just use modern hardware and modern stuff. It just works and it's 64-bit. Now you can also you can also see that I'm now swapped out my monitor, running a Dell UltraSharp, which runs at uh, 1600 by 1200, uh, better than the other 1280 by 1024, the BenQ monitor before. Also got some new monitors, so this one has now also become my test bench monitor. So we're gonna go ahead and boot here. So this is our compact flash card, and for whatever reason, the SSD that's plugged into this isn't showing up. Oh can't fucking imagine why. So this SSD had our install of React OS. What do you think is going to happen to that? I don't, I don't know. Something dangerous. That looks to be a native resolution. Kernel panicked. Check the Drago One videos. Everything has to always go wrong. 
Now to be fair, I did have it plugged in via USB 3. Maybe you didn't like booting on USB 3. Okay, well this is different. This is this is really different. Why is why do we now have a bootloader? Now let's change the video mode. It's now 1024 by 768. Before it was native, although the error we had with the kernel panic happened when it was on this stage, which had to do with storage. And uh, it got past that, I guess. Oh, for the sake of fuck, what the shit? Handy dandy reset button. So now that we're back at this screen again, which I'm not quite sure we, why we were at it at all here, okay. So we got safe mode options. You can individually turn some stuff off. Well, this this definitely gives a lot more flexibility than the reactor was just in this little bootloader thing, I guess. Um, safe mode. Uh, let's safe mode. Put the system in safe mode. This can be enabled independent from the other options. Okay. Very verbose. Very well written. It's amazing. Well, to be honest, I wasn't actually expecting having to do any kind of troubleshooting whatsoever with this. Um, if it is graphics driver based, I believe there's an option for that. Now our safe mode options have reset. And now we'll not use safe mode and just use the fail safe graphics driver. If that doesn't work, we'll try both of them. Or I can try both of them right now, just so that we're changing one thing every time instead of that would technically be two changes since I'd have to turn off safe mode first. Pull in there, okay. Aha, so that was it. So why did it do that? Well, what I think happened was, is I'm on the integrated graphics, so we might not like that. So now remember, before I even go any further than this, the run installer option is right here. Before I go any further, we gotta remember what our goal on this video is, which is, can HaikuOS function as a daily driver operating system? Well, I don't know. Maybe. I actually literally do not know at this point. I'm going in blind. I've never even tried this hardware on this operating system, and certainly not this version of the operating system, which I probably said before is in beta. That's right, not in alpha. It's in beta. It's like this is actually the beta 2 release, which came out earlier this year. Wish I said that earlier in the video. Okay, whatever. Um, if this is going to be our daily driver system, and this is in Haiku will be its OS, we need to make sure it's actually the hardware for it's a daily driver. If this was my daily driver, which it used to be, would I use integrated graphics? Well, fuck no. I don't think I've ever used integrated graphics until making this video on this motherboard, um, outside of like testing to make sure I installed the CPU correctly. Other pieces of hardware I'm not using anymore, since they've been replaced by improved versions. Here's another one. This is my GTX 970. Will Haiku OS work with this? Will it like this? Better than that? I don't know. Let's try it. Because if it is going to be our daily driver, we need uh, daily driver performance. So there we are, on our GTX 970, now ready to boot Haiku OS. I just keep making things dumber and dumber, don't I? All right, have our safe boot options. Okay, we'll leave them. We're outside of safe mode, no safe mode. Haiku only, continue booting. 
still is in 1024 by 768 mode, but I think that's the default for when we get that bootloader. Seems a little quicker than before. And what do you know? Haiku OS likes my GTX 970 more than it likes my integrated graphics. So this time we didn't get the installer right away. Could be because we didn't use safe mode. Safe mode probably gives the option to, you know, hey, maybe you don't want to do a live C. It might just fuck up. So maybe we'll just let you install it because you just need to get it through real smart on their part. Um, so yeah, it works. Looks about the same as it did last time we were here. That's not a mark against it. It's just the facts. Now, I can't remember where the installer lies. Installer. The installer is used to copy Haiku onto another volume. Look at that. Where's the applications? Apps. Already there. How simple was that? Pretty simple. Now, uh... I'm trying to make some com compromises with my white balance here because uh, my camera says that my white balance should be about here. But, uh, and it does make Haiku OS look a lot better, but it still is not that background blue. It is a little bit off, but this one brings out the yellows a little bit more. So I think we'll stick with that for now. I just hate looking at uh, piss yellow walls in the background. I don't know. Oh, look at that. I fixed it. Okay, so this is the apps folder, as we've looked at previously. There's the installer. And this is uh, what we were greeted with a little bit earlier. Okay. I don't remember how big uh, Haiku OS was last time, but right now it's currently sitting at one gigabyte in size. So, see this no name here? That's React OS. You can see it's FAT32. We can customize what packages we want. So this is our partition editor here. Dev disk SCSI raw. See how it says SATA SSD? Oh, well, you can't see that. Now you can! SATA SSD, Sony USB compact flash card. Oh man, this looks amazing. Does this, is this better than G parted? I don't know. Hmm. Whoa, okay. It like instantly mounted it. And now I can even see the files on it. And we can see Deus Ex is in here. Or no, that's DirectX. You can forgive my mistake there. Obviously we can't run that without uh, at least a little bit of help. But that's our stuff. Am I willing to part with this for all the work that I put into this to get it booting? Uh, it wasn't really a lot of work. All it was is that I needed to find the right combination of hardware to make it so that it would uh, install, and once you have that combination, then it just goes. It's not a big deal. And I already have that computer all set up and ready to go. If I want to do it again, I can. Uh, the only thing is I'll have to copy some of the games back on and reinstall Deus Ex, but uh, oh well. This is a dilemma I deal with every single video that I make, where, oh, do I erase this install that I made three years ago, but I didn't really care that much about it. I made a short video about it. But it was actually a long video because I don't make short videos. Uh, goodbye. Eh. Well, well, can't format it. Oh, because it's, it's mounted. Son of a bitch, why did I mount it? Now I can't unmount. Resource busy. I'm gonna is the resource busy because drive setup is using it? <laughs> I don't remember having that on the desktop before. I have a soundbar on my Dell Ultrasharp. So it saves the clutter of having to have big Bose speakers on the sides and an extra 
wall outlet used up. Installer. Setup partitions. Format. Write changes. Jesus Christ. Oh yes, it actually auto-mounted it. Oh my god. Can I at least unmount it now? Yeah, I don't I don't know why the resource is busy. Something's messing with it. I mean this happens on like every operating system. It's always something that's hanging it up or some crap. Throw it in the trash. So I didn't want to do that. That's actually a nice button to have. Thank you, do it. That was close. Just don't start doing anything with it, and you can safely unmount it. Okay. And finally, formatted it. Onto this. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the timer out. Now it's actually going a lot slower considering that we have a much faster processor now. Um, and uh, actually that's the only thing that's really different. But, oh, other than the fact that there's more stuff, it's a bigger OS now. So, um, Haiku WebKit, I saw something like that. Right well, I think they changed a lot of stuff because it's taken some time. But uh, if we get lucky here, we're actually going to get done in less than 60 seconds. It still makes it the fastest. Um, OS install, I think, ever. 57, 58, 59. It did it. It was exactly 60 seconds. I'll be damned. The installation complete. Are you shitting me? That was less than 30 seconds. So it's now been installed. This is our bootable. And this is our installed system. Looks like we're missing some stuff. Now, some of this stuff might not populate. Unless either A, it is the currently booted system, or B, there needs to be some initial initialization that the OS needs to be needs to do uh, on its first boot. Man, it's nice to see some um, fresh years here. Yeah, pretty nice. And we'll reboot. And it's now in native resolution. That was a very fast boot. And we're up. Holy shit, uh, now we can't see anything, because this is a Dell Ultra Sharp, and uh, things are really far away. God, I can't even see anything anymore. Okay. Um, no big deal. Actually, we're fine. Wait, what was I even doing? Uh, oh yeah, I need it to be my daily driver. So how do we do that? Um, that's a good question. So basically, what makes a daily driver, and the way to I'm going to see if I can approach this, is to see, um, can I just sit in front of it and use it as I would my main? Which means that I'm probably going to want to get the web browser going, probably want to watch some YouTube, uh, you might want to cruise around Reddit, or something else like that. So, how well can we do that? How smooth is it? How well is uh, YouTube supported? And that's just web browsing. You probably might want to install some apps like Steam or Discord to see if those work. Now, Steam does have a Linux version, but it by no means has a BOS version or a Haiku version. Does that mean that we're going to have to use some sort of wine? Does wine even exist on Haiku? I have no idea. But can it be a daily driver OS? I, I really don't know. But I'll tell you that the graphics drivers at least managed to pull this off. So now I know there is a web browser and it's called Web Positive. The fucking telescope. Here's Web Positive. Um, it's not going to work because I don't have the internet connected. Now, the second I plug the internet in, I get a little notification that says, uh, network's ready. That was pretty cool. You'll also notice that I didn't need any drivers for that. Mm-hmm. 
Google.com. All right, that's pretty slick so far. Check out YouTube. Takes a little bit to load, but uh, I'm a performer. Always have been and always will be. Wait, is isn't this already muted? It says it's muted, but it's not stopping. No. I'm a performer. Wait, what? Always have been and Okay, well I guess that's one mark against it. It doesn't auto mute the intro. Yeah, loading these videos uh, on these web pages, uh, loading up everything seems to work. It just everything's a little slower. You know how um, how uh, you have like oh this web browser does things like 1.3 times faster than this one does. So Chrome's 1.53 faster than Edge, and Edge is 1.53 faster than Firefox, and Firefox 1.53 than Opera, and like oh, blah, blah, blah. does it even matter? They come out so fast. But uh, I got uh, pretty good internet here, and I've been clicking around on YouTube a good portion of the day today because I'm goofing off. But, uh, um, man, it wasn't this slow. But, and I'm wired in, hardwired with Ethernet. And uh, I've used this computer on a daily basis for the past eight years. So I know about how it's supposed to perform. This, I can already tell you it's going a bit slower. And that has to do with probably their uh, web rendering engine, I guess. Let's take a look at the whole screen. Yeah. Yeah. What does that say? Probably says your browser doesn't support full screen. But will it play back stuff? Ooh, Ten hours? Holy shit. Give me a run for my money. Look at my own stuff so I don't get in trouble. Remember this video? I don't either, but we can't go in the full screen, but we can do the next best thing, which is to maximize, and, ooh, that's weird, see how it, like, we have a lot of white space up here because the bar, even though it seems like we're saving space by just having the little notch there, we're actually not when it's stretched like that, so... And then over here, we have another white space because this is supposed to be occupied by thingies. These, I'm not criticizing it for this, this is just how it is. Oh boy. What's that? It's advertisement to... Revealing kind of looks like a frowny face. We're getting there, guys. I'm gonna uncrash this. Yeah, the whole YouTube uh, not working thing doesn't surprise me. I mean, I've tried using YouTube on you know some less capable OS's in the past, and uh, it I was this this did remarkably well for if if I assume this is their own rendering engine or some sort of derivative of something else, but. Uh, if it's their own stuff, very, very good. If it's the derivative of something else, it's a little less good, but then I don't know how that fits into working on this operating system and or anything else, so um, not exactly a web design expert to tell you how these pages are being rendered and the details behind that. Looks like we're back to functionality here, yeah. Yep, yep. Well, we can keep going. We could do every single pixel, but uh, I don't think it's uh, going to bring it back. Okay, so already it has technically failed the test of um, the daily driver challenge. Not that it was a challenge, but it failed the test because YouTube crashed. A very simple task. It crashed. Can't do full screen. Again, whatever. Let me just go to the YouTube page. So far, it's actually pretty good at uh, showing video. Yep, and it crashed. Fuck. 
Yeah, so it looks like DuckDuckGo was the only way I could actually watch the video, which was kind of weird. It just had to friggin' destroy all of YouTube and just watch in this little embed here. Because I, I don't think I can do it any other way. See how, see how I clicked ahead there? Everything's fucked up. I can't even see it. Okay. It's not advancing the video when I do that. Well, there's no way to actually forward the video. It says we're at 19 minutes in. 25 minutes in. Um, but it's not, not anywhere near that time. Let's full screen it. Your browser doesn't support full screen. Well, that's great. I really just wanted to have picture in picture of like <laughs> this inside of this. Um, are we done yet? Not really. I mean, we could try another web browser, I guess. That is a thing. There's a lot of different options for different software to get. And you go from uh, applications to Haiku Depot. Hey, cave story. So if I open, uh, hopefully, oh, Dubal. We can run Zoot Dubal now. And now we're at 17. What an interesting friggin' graph. Can we go to YouTube? Ooh, not looking good yet. Oh boy, well, this is, you know, this is notoriously difficult to load. Like, the, um, the amount of engineering that went into the YouTube main page is uh, kind of a lot for things to handle. Although, this is handling it all right. Oh, what? I can scroll to change the... Oh, look at that. This is like factorial levels of graphs here. Um, yeah, okay, it's not, it's not crapping itself, and it's not sending or receiving right now. So it's kind of just stuck, it looks like. So Dubal's out for a YouTube test. Otter browser, away. Am I being too hard on it? No, I don't think so. If I wanted to be my daily driver, which nobody actually suggested that I do except for myself, it needs to at least be able to play YouTube videos on that install really quick, so let's just install NetSurf just so we have the option. In the meantime, I'll run Otter Browser, not to be confused with Ice Weasel. This looks very similar to Firefox in terms of interface. That looks concerning. We've got some stats at the bottom to show how far it's loading. We got about as far. Ooh, whoa! Uh -huh. It's gonna autoplay the video, isn't it? Yep, it is. Gonna beat it to it. Oh, it failed to play it actually. Oh boy. We got stuff going on. So we didn't peak much there. We haven't even gone above the 50% line. We're seeing a lot of like multi-core activity, but you know, it just might be how. Haiku's written that it's doing that sort of stuff. Let's binge. <laughs> One more to go. Net surf. Oh, well, that was lightweight as hell. Welcome to Net surf. I can't type. Still concerning. If you're wondering why I'm going to YouTube, this by this method is just to show what Google looks like before I get there. And oh boy, this reminds me of Chameleon. So thus far, Web Positive is the best web browser on Haiku. Just don't put it into cinema theater mode. So let's go back to web positive. 
and do exactly what we just did with every other web browser. It looks way better, doesn't it? A little bit of a delay, but the shortest delay I've seen yet. And it actually plays stuff. Wait, I already... Okay. Okay, what happens when we try to binge now? Guys, guess what I got? Titanfall! Yeah, I'm gonna play it on my Mac! Okay, alright. So how big can we get it before it crashes? Because what crashed it before is I clicked theater mode. If you just don't use theater mode, maybe it's just usable, straight up. Mute is impossible. Unless you hold it. You gotta hold it down and see the comments. Just running my YouTube video. Should be like a cakewalk for this processor, but holy lord. Looks like an art supply store in this bitch. Did you guys know I have a Twitter? I don't only use it. Holy crap, it loads Twitter. So like you could be on YouTube here and then you could have Twitter here. Can I drag this out? No, nope. that's kind of a Chrome thing, I guess. And I'm not logged in, so I don't see everything, but, uh, yeah, okay. No, it does pause. We got some weird stuff going on here. So, I mean, you could do it. It would just be really rough. Shit. I was in the middle of a download. Uh. So there is another solution for watching YouTube videos um, without having some of the glitchy problems we were having. There is a little bit of a workaround. It's called UberTuber, and there's it's actually similar to, or may actually be the same thing, as uh, a standalone app that does nothing but play YouTube URLs. I remember, I think I messed around with it on a Power Mac G5 at one point. It was like, the only way you could watch YouTube was to just use a dedicated app that just brought up the video feed, and that was it. No extra CSS on the sides or any weird bloat of the website that uh, modern processors handle with no problem, but older stuff sort of craps itself. Um, Haiku doesn't have a problem with that on the hardware angle, but more on the, you know, web rendering engine angle. So it can work pretty well when you're scrolling through not playing videos, um, but uh, if we take, uh, I don't know, go with one of the classics here, uh, you just go copy link, and it automatically puts it in there and you hit play. And it kind of like downloads it, I guess. Hey, smokers, Drawer One here. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Power Mac G4. Kind of has a nice little uh, screen here, and we're in a really high quality right now. A bunch of shit just fell over. Uh, and it's got nice VU meters here. It's a 406 model, codenamed Sawtooth. Okay, so. It looks really good. Is there anything on the back? Can I hop around here? It's got a buffer more. Hmm. Can't really skip around much. Maybe come back. Maybe come back. Okay. So, I guess if you wanted to get really ridiculous, you could go through here, click Save As, and I'll save it to the desktop. Select this folder. And now it's actually started downloading the file, and hilariously enough, it's the icon of, like, a VHS tape. Now, it says abort download, but it's grayed out, and it says save and complete. Were my videos that short back then that it's already done downloading? Well, let's see if I can just open the file now. Picked up right where we left off. Yeah, see, that's more like it. 
Oh wait, right, no, we lost it again. Stop. Play. No. If you just want to play a file from start to finish, so let's take something shorter like the moving day video. Copy link. I don't know if that's the same link or not, so I'll paste it. And we just start with saving it on the desktop. And it says downloading. Save. Select. Downloading. Okay, well, I know this one. Oh, well, sit now, the saving is complete. Except I don't see it anywhere on the desktop. But what somebody can do is open with VLC. Yeah. There's a VLC build. Where's the playhead controller? Where's the. Uh, Where's the well? There. Well, well, we can go on full screen. There's that. Okay. So let's try jumping around. Yeah, it's you can jump around. VLC is the book. Oh, what happened? Okay. Well, here's my play, play tools. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa! All right. So here's a temporary folder from UberTuber, and it's left of some junk in here. And there is an option to remove temporary files on quit, but they're still here. And so far, they're all MP4 files. Play. There it goes. Size is getting bigger. It has the same modification date as the release date of the video, which is kind of cool. Download fails. <laughs> UberTuber. Paste. Play. Hey, smokers. Drawer one here, and today we're going to be taking a look at. So is UberTuber doing that or what? Because it's it just downloads the file. Oh, that's why I couldn't scrub around in it. It wasn't done downloading it yet. Of course, there's nothing wrong with Media Player, it's fine. It probably worked with VLC too, you know, come to think of it, but if I played it regularly, just like this, in real time, then I probably wouldn't have an issue because it wouldn't play as fast as it's actually downloading here. So it's actually set up pretty well as long as I don't start fucking with it. But the second that you try to scrub, that technology is reserved for the web web browser version of YouTube over here. But because the file is getting loaded onto the computer in real time and it's being played off of the computer locally, um, which was pretty much always the case, but in a much bigger chunk, I guess you should, could say, uh, it's still going, I think. And so once this is done downloading, then I'll be able to jump around. So 131.02 megabytes. I think that's done because I have a full version of it up here. Let's see how big it is. 120.76. So that this is actually bigger than the one I fully downloaded. So now if I try to jump around, no problem. We couldn't. I'm so stupid. Oh my god. Speaking of using, watching YouTube on computers that are, like, too weird to use it, I think I have a scene in this very video where I actually go online and watch a YouTube video in a weird-ass way. What is with these fucking, like, Matroska doll exhibit shit going on? Of course, it looks like shit. I can't even see it. This is back in when I recorded this. It was like 2014 or something like that. And you could still watch. This is just the most bare bones and basic way you could actually still watch YouTube on Tiger. Can't do that anymore. I guarantee it. Okay, so we got, what, one functionality out of our daily, daily driver. We're not looking so good so far. And we already have to use a patchwork solution to get it working. And it only works for some videos, not all of them. Because if I try to pick a different video, like, let's just see if I get lucky with this one. Um, hit 
play. And keep an eye on whether or not it even does anything. Now maybe I'll get lucky again. Okay, so now it's working great. <laughs> Let's grab another one. Play. I guess I don't need to paste it, it is updating it. Oh my god, that's pretty good actually. Now it's getting better. Now we're talking. Let's do something newer. Drug one here. Beautiful. I know it's been a while since I put out a video. I've been kind of taking another extended break from. And here, and here's your. It's a, the that's the other cool thing. Bad is going on right Is here. that if you see if you watch a video to the end and you really like it and you actually wanted to save it, you already have it as long as you don't close UberTuber. And even then, you could tell it to not remove the temporary file, and you could literally keep every single YouTube video you watched on your computer, which is you know, really hoarder. Esque, um, but like for archival people, that would be nice, right? I'm sure there's like non haiku versions of this, like front ends for YouTube, because that's really what it is. It's a front end for YouTube, and uh, you know, just another way of experiencing YouTube. Uh, as you also notice, there's no ads, it just straight downloads them. I assume that if people use this method in, in mass, uh, they would probably keep people from doing it, I guess, but. I don't know. Uh, as you can see, it is still downloading right now. On the quest for Daily Driver YouTube, I think we can do it. I think it's kind of usable. You don't, in terms of like browse features, like recommended stuff, you'd have to go on to sites, or you'd have to go on to pages and then not make sure you don't load the video so that it doesn't crash. Because otherwise, you know, you could lose all your work and stuff, so you don't want that. But if you can just get the links or somebody sends you a link, then you're fine. But wait a minute, how is someone going to send you a link if you don't have Discord? Well, assuming Discord is your um, messaging app of choice, I'm sure there's some very decent IRC apps um, that you can use without a problem, and you can get links that way. If you're only using IRC, then you're fine. I'm sure there's some other messaging type stuff you can use, but right now the one that's in the spotlight is Discord, and it only has Linux, Mac, iOS, and Android support as far as I know. But it does actually run in a web browser without having to download the app. It thinks I'm on Windows. Oh, this is actually loading up the page pretty good. Okay, so obviously we're not going to get the Windows version. Uh, I didn't look too much into Wine for Haiku because I felt like that was going to be like a total pipe dream. So I haven't looked into it. But let's see if we can just open it in the browser. I clicked Login, and this is the Login screen. And nothing is screwed up yet other than the background looks kind of weird. And uh, there's no QR code here, which I guess is kind of good for me recording this. So let me just go and sign in and see if we can actually see some stuff. So this is what happens when you try to log in. It, uh, it doesn't even give you a, a chance to like wait for it. And then it's gone. Man, that was a tease. Oh my god, we almost got there. Well, we do have two other browsers, or sorry, three other browsers to try. Although those browsers have fallen short in every uh, instance. But... I'm still gonna try it because we gotta get there somehow, right? Okay, so here's Dubal. Okay, well, that looks kinda good. That looks kinda bad. So here's the net graph. Here's Dubal on the Discord homepage. Click login. And that's it. We just get white. That's it. Auto browser? Feel like we're gonna be swap. Oh wow, it remembered my last URL. Okay, so far every browser has loaded up this page. Okay, so we're gonna log in. Okay, that this looks better than Web Positive did. So let's see if I can log in. A little spike when we're loading. Spike again. Will we actually get to use Discord? Oh my god. OK, 
you know, obviously there's some stuff that I would need to censor here just because to protect other people I'm talking to, as I'm sure you are aware. Now, the servers on the left here are there, but there you can't see the icon for them, so... I have a server group now opened, and so it was actually able to open it. And there's the CNC Online group. And holy shit, you can actually see stuff. Well, everything I can see, even like embedded uh, things like this, emojis. It's really laggy. It's not smooth at all. Um, can we look at the settings? I can't scroll up or down on this page. So it's pretty dang broken. Um, can you, could you actually use it? I don't know. Hope that isn't taken as sarcastic. But I just sent a message, so that's cool. Now obviously I can't really show uh, a DM, but uh, here's a, a DM from Misik, the Misix bot, so you can see what it looks like. Um, help. Help. Your request cannot be delivered because you're not on share server. Okay. So you can very barely and just barely use this. It is, uh, it is quite, uh, quite ass. Um, but if you need to get on to send a message, you can fucking do it. Is it fun? No. But somebody could just send you a YouTube link and you could open it with UberTuber. So we, you can just barely do it. You can actually do it. Have Discord and YouTube, you could very technically, very wobbly, very shakily actually do it. Somebody said just chill, chill with your friends and whatever. Now, could you be in a voice call? No fucking idea. I kind of doubt it. Unsupported browser. You can't. Uh, actually use um, this at all for that. So Discord doesn't need to improve anything. IQOS just needs to make web positive better and then we're great. Except this isn't web positive, this is Otter Browser. Otter Browser wasn't able to do YouTube, but it is able to do a little bit of Discord. Uh, I'm not even gonna try it with uh, the Netware one because that one was really bad. So I'm pretty sure that one doesn't work, but we're almost there. Okay, so what else do we do with daily drivers? We play video games, right? Now I've showed that we were playing some games before, like Quake 2. So what else do we need in from a daily driver? Be able to play games, right? Well, we can play some games, a handful of them, really. Quake 2 instantly launches. And it runs better than it did last time. Although last time we didn't have a 970, and last time we didn't have... This is Lotus Balls. We, and we didn't have we didn't have an i7, we didn't have a 970. Is it using it though? I don't fucking know. It's using OpenGL version 1.4. I don't even know what, how that compares. Um, let's set the video mode to the actual one, the native, and full screen. I guess that's border border window. So that's it's a little choppy. Looks like it's 30 FPS. But that's 1200p. Although I know everybody knows Quake 2's big on having its ray tracing demo. This is not. This does not have any ray tracing. <laughs> Let's kind of compare the performance here to last time. I'm trying to recreate what I did last time I played this. So we have, so, I mean, can you play, you can play your Quake, but uh, you can't really play other new stuff. We need Steam, we need something, and I mean, Steam is great for Ubuntu. It just, it just works, even the Proton Engine was, looked amazing. It, it was total turnkey solution um, for when I messed with it on the, the Mac Pro when it was 32-bit Linux only. But if you did it on full 64-bit, that would be absolutely amazing. I haven't demonstrated that on this channel to see how awesome it actually is, but, you know. Anyway. 
Um, that is that might actually be a major stumbling block. Now, I spent a good amount of time sifting through some of the offerings on the Haiku Depot, and uh, I was just giggling like a little kid at all the cool little goodies that were in there because there was some interesting stuff like um, Photoshop alternatives and video editors. I mean, like you get a, a game every now and then, like Gish that you recognize, and you're like, oh, that's bright. Does it fill the void that you need? It can't. There's just not enough of it. Super Tux, you got your V, Notepad QQ. Design schematics for PCBs, sound editor, professional free open source painting program, another paint program, code editor, advanced text editor, email client, AVI DMUX. Is this the video editor I was thinking of? Because it's not really a video editor per se. There, free open source video editor. Never even heard of this. But let's uh, open OpenShot. I was actually considering editing this video in OpenShot just to show if it was actually possible. Uh, but I don't know if it is. So, or what file types it supports. But I do have a test file I can use here. PowerMac G4. Uh, we can get down to some editing here. Hey, smokers. Drawer 1 here. And today we're going to be taking a look at... Hmm, okay. Can I scale this? How many tracks can we have? We got a lot of tracks? We got lots of tracks! This? There we go! Hey! Okay, alright, 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 alright. That's good so far, good so far. That was the best uh, video editing, free video editing software I've ever used. So that's pretty good. Okay, so the final. Some weird stuff going on with the graphs down here. Okay, so what about it? we can export video. And let's see, we want MP4, 720p, quality high. We want to save it on the desktop. And choose. And we want to call it uh, we'll export the video. Whoa, we're gonna look at a graph down here. Bing! All done. All right. Got a different icon for it up here, but. Internals. Slaughter. A little bit of a rendering thing there. Internals. Slaughter. That's weird. 3.55 megabytes. Hmm, that's big enough to send over Discord. Holy shit, it's gonna let me do it? I don't believe it. <laughs> so, I mean... Technically, if you wanted to take a really super simple Drago, right? You just need a way to, you know, get on Discord, watch some YouTube videos, play some Quake, and edit his own videos. What more would you need, right? I mean, I could, in theory, do all that. And I could, and if, you know, if times are tough, right? You could actually use Haiku as a daily driver. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Holy crap, a lot of asterisks is. But if you're okay with playing Doom, I mean, I did, is Doom, I like, Doom was not working last time I tried it. Like, Jeezy Doom, it's like, select the directory with the game files, and like, you, I already pointed it to there, and I clicked run and nothing happened, so I don't, I don't really know why. Probably doing something wrong. Oh, I think I know why. There. I have only one Doom mod in there. There we go. Oh, well, this, is, this haiku is everything I need. And you know what else? Haiku Depot has a screen recorder. B screen capture. The recorder utility for Haiku. So we'll install this. We're going to record some sick ass Doom footage. We're gonna edit it, and then we're gonna like upload it to YouTube or some shit. I don't know. I haven't tried, like, logging into YouTube with my account yet. I probably will not fuck with that right now, but it's gonna open B screen capture. Okay, so we wanna capture a window. Select the window. Uh, shit, whoa, that was a little scary. I thought it was crashing again. 
Okay, so select window. Okay, so it's gonna capture Doom. And uh, window edges, file name, output file. Um, where is it putting it? I just will put it on the desktop just so I can find it. And uh, output. And uh, scale 100%. File format. Uh, probably the AVI media codec MP4. Okay, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's go try and go for 30 FPS. Okay. All right, start recording. Activity monitor at the bottom. See it like crabbing itself out. All right, let's play some fucking dude. Doing good so far. Caps lock this bitch. Yeah, I used to be so good at Doom. What is this terrible gameplay? Ah. Oh god, my eyes hurt looking at this. Oh, it's so small. Oh. And he's dead. Hey, what happened to the music? Okay. Alright, so stop recording. And now we have an output. Oh crap, it's an MPEG. Not an MP4. Shit. Probably should have done AVI. Can I drag it in? I can. Shit, it didn't record the sound. Did I not set that? Actually, I really wouldn't be surprised if it didn't capture the sound. It doesn't say anything about audio. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not too surprising, but... And the footage itself is pretty dang laggy. But uh, that's okay. Because we got this far. Whoa, the tearing looks like I'm going through wobbly land. Holy shit. So let's just try and cut up. So if I scrub through it, it actually... It actually, it, it, the problem is with the video files, not with like the computer shitting itself. I mean, it is taxing it a little bit when I do that, because if you see, you see for artifacting up the butt, but you see that there's a little, and then I stop, and it goes back to the baseline. Let's just try and, whoa, God, look at that. Everything looks like it's angled because of the tearing. Like, look, we have literal curves out of what would be vertical portions of the wall. Are now curved because of the tearing. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not complaining. It just. It looks kind of cool and like psychedelic and trippy. Hey guys, editing Draga here. Um, what follows is a lot of editing and a lot of editing time. So this first footage I recorded kind of sucked. I didn't want to use it. I recorded some new footage, and uh, then I tried to actually edit together what seemed like some sort of kill montage video like in the most crude and basic sense possible, it was uh, pretty irritating to use the editor. I was standing there trying to get just basic clips cut up and there was weird stuff going on with it not processing undo steps properly and other stuff. This is not a mark against open shot. I think it's just the haiku port of it has some issues or something because uh, other people, uh, from what I know, don't have issues like this. So. Um, I think that's just a haiku thing, but uh, the other thing is is that the footage that came out, I probably should have used like a 15 FPS or lower FPS or something like that because it was having trouble actually writing to that file and it ended up getting some very choppy footage. So to compensate for that, in OpenShot, I increased the speed of the footage by two times. So it's actually it actually comes out a little bit faster. And there was with this one part with the Cacodemon where it took forever to kill him with the pistol. So I sped that up four times, and the rest of it is just two times. And then I also added some titles. Um, it uses SVG files for titles, like vector graphics. Um, some are auto-generated with the software, and or you can use Inkscape to import your own titles, which I think is pretty cool that it actually supports SVG files for titles. I think that's excellent. So I put it all together, and the link's going to be in the description if you actually want to watch this trash. I used uh, um, copyrighted music in it as well that I think you'll think is pretty appropriate for it, I suppose. But uh, this segment was just way too long to actually edit down at all in a way that would make sense without having it just be like some weird speed editing stuff. So what you're seeing right now is kind of just like a couple clips from that happening because I think it was like an hour or two. I don't even know. I lost track entirely. Uh, but uh, let's jump back to the point where we're pretty much done. I also tried re-encoding it like 
17 times trying to get it to fit in 7 megabytes without looking like crap. And uh, I don't think I successfully did it. I did. I was able to send it on Discord, but it just looked like ass. So I'm going to put the 720p version, even though the original footage is 640 by 480 uh, in the link in the description. I'm going to upload it. And there was actually a really funny uh, frame grab at the end of it. Look at that face. Oh my god. That should be my new YouTube avatar or something. Um, which I will also be providing as a PNG. So that just about sums up Haiku. Not Haiku OS, apparently. Even though that's what their website URL is. Maybe it is Haiku OS. Maybe it doesn't matter. Who cares? But what matters here is, is that I was able to do way more than I expected. Considerably more. Um, or maybe considerably less. I don't really know. I don't really know. I didn't really have any expectations, but I believe they have been exceeded. So, in this case, what we should probably take away from this is Haiku is going in a tremendously excellent direction right now. Give it another two years, and we'll actually be somewhere. It'll probably be toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Linux, maybe. Or, well, it's not going to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Nothing really has the support that Linux does in the open source community. Um, Linux just has way more support than Haiku pretty much ever will. But I feel if this project keeps going full steam, give it another year or two, it's, I'm going to guess, going to be out of beta. I don't know what their uh, timeline is looking like right now, but considering how the improvement I saw over a two-year period to now, although I didn't try any of this stuff then, but uh, hey, this is not bad, not bad at all. Um, if you really wanted to um, push through, could you actually make content creation with this? I have no idea. <laughs> I really have no idea. Uh, it could be pretty rough using the very limited number of apps that are made for Haiku. There'll be more and more as time goes on, and hopefully uh, this video will kind of signal boost that a little bit. And uh, more people can get out and try it and uh, leave some feedback with them and uh, maybe get some more people on the project. I kind of said that about React OS, you know, you got to contribute your time, potentially your money into the project. I don't think anybody's working on either of these projects absolutely full time, but it's hard for them to justify working on it without some sort of monetization route of some kind. Are there a lot of other projects that are probably even better than both of these operating systems put together? that doesn't have anywhere near as much spotlight out there? Maybe. I don't know what it is yet. I've had a lot of suggestions over the years of just what the hell should I do the next video on? What should I install next? And I went through a lot of different ideas and weird shit. And uh, nothing blew me away quite like Haiku did. But again, it's only in comparison to other kind of crappy OSs. So um, this is, you know, just what it is. I could go on and on about this, but I think you guys get the idea. Hi, cool us, everybody. Um, lots of potential. Definitely interesting. Uh, more than I expected. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you next time.